Hello there, fellow humans of Earth. How y'all been doing? I hope you've been doing well. Anyways, so uh, about a week ago, I watched a movie that I've been literally hyped about for like two years. That movie is uh, Dune Part 2. If you've seen the first movie or read the books, you already know how good and how special the Dune series are. I mean, these books are some of the best sci-fi books ever written. Open the door for all the other sci-fi books that have been written ever since. And they are like some of the few books I have ever read in my entire life. I don't read books. So anyways, you can understand that if I read the books and I liked them, how hyped I would be about the movies. Because let me tell you, the movies that have been made before, man, if you know about the movie I'm talking about, the 1984 Dune, you already know how bad it was, okay? People have tried to make movies about these books, it's just, it's so difficult. Because the Dune books have so much complicated situations going on there and so many different themes that you would have to somehow weave into the story and fit it into a two hour or three hour movie. And then the worst part is that there's so much internal dialogue so how the hell are you gonna put that on a screen right that's the question that that's why it was always difficult for people to convert dune into a good movie and then came the guy the guy that made the the dune movies the the, the last two movies uh i'm probably gonna butcher his name if i try to pronounce it so i'm just gonna call him larry larry is probably the most interesting director to come out in the past 10 years i think the first time i ever watched sicario i kept on re-watching it literally every day for like a week i would literally fall asleep watching that movie and just now I realized that that would probably not sound like a compliment but trust me it was when I heard that he was making the Dune movies, I was like, good. This is a guy that can tell you a story without dialogue. He can show you what the characters are feeling and thinking about without them having to say it out loud. And then came the first movie. Um, what do I say about the first movie? It was a good movie. It was the best ever interpretation of the first half of the first book we've ever gotten. It's been 60 years and people have been getting it wrong ever since. So the first movie was a step in the right direction. There was a problem with a few parts that have been changed and certain things that were completely cut out of the movie mainly, like uh, the two huge scenes that were just completely removed. And then there was issues with the casting, like some of the characters, they, you know, they're written in a certain way, they changed him somehow. And then there was the doctor Dr. Kynes character, they cast her as a female, changed her when in the book she was written as a male. But all in all, the first movie was as close to the book as anything we've ever gotten. So ultimately, I still had hope for the second, you know, movie because that would be the second part of the book and hopefully he would stick to the to the actual script. Unfortunately, he didn't stick to the actual script. It's like it's like he didn't have enough time after the first movie was released to write a good script for the second movie. It's like he didn't even have enough time to read the second part of the book. He forgotten what happens in the book, he forgotten what the characters are like. I know that people love this second Dune movie. Pretty sure like all the critics love it, the fans love it, probably made a ton of money in the box office. It's it's a nice movie, don't get me wrong. The people that, that made this movie, they're not hacks. They know what they're doing. They're very talented. And the movie should it be any other movie, just another sci-fi movie, it would be a very nice, well-made movie. I, I don't argue with that. It's just not Dune. You're gonna have to excuse me, I'm kind of raving here. It's just, I'm really pissed off. That's, that's what it is. I watched this movie and it pissed me the hell off. Because it's not Dune. And this was about the best chance we would get to get an actually good Dune movie. And I don't understand how can he get all the characters wrong. All of them. All the main characters he got completely wrong. I mean, where do I begin? This, this begin with Stilgar, since people seem to like Stilgar of this movie. The Stilgar of the movie is portrayed as a superstitious just follower. He just literally worships Paul. Everything he says, he just goes on one knee with teary eyes and then he goes, Oh, guide us, oh, and then he starts just doing weird noises at some point. That's not the Stilgar of the book. The, the Stilgar of the book was a very independent man, a very respectable man, someone that Paul loved and respect as a friend. And while yes, eventually he would become a follower, he wasn't initially. And the only thing that made him become a follower, it's not its not some old prophecies and superstitions that were spread by the many Jesuits centuries ago. No, it's because he watched Paul. He watched him in action. He saw the things that he does. He saw him predict the future accurately. He saw him make plans that would come to fruition in ways that nobody imagined. He saw him do things that he couldn't explain with his mind and that's why he became in awe of Paul. The Silgar of the movie is nothing like that. He has just weak and pathetic and superstitious. And that's not just Stilgar. It's like you look at Chani in the books and you look at her in the movie and it's like what the hell? How could you get her so wrong? Chani in the books, she's someone that is strong, fierce, passionate, but at the 
same time, she's grounded. She understands her role and her responsibility to her people and to her men. The Chani in the books would literally kill for Paul. She has killed for him in the book. The Chani of the books, she has emotions, she has fears and worries, but she controls them. She doesn't let them just take over her and she runs around like a teenage little boy. No, she's a woman. Even if she's young in age, she's still a woman, fully mature and capable of handling herself. When she realizes that Paul has to marry a different woman other than her and it's for the greater good, what she does is literally puts her emotions aside and treats him as just another Fremen, someone talking to her leader, and she asks him for his orders. Even though that's her man, that's that's the father of a child, she still realizes that he is the leader of her people. If he's no longer her man, even if he's gonna marry another woman, even if he doesn't love her anymore, she still has a responsibility to remain composed, to not let your emotions just take over you and start behaving like a like a little kid. And that's exactly the opposite of Chani in the movie. The Chani of the movie is just emotional all the time. She lets her emotions just control her and move her and direct her, and she lashes out at everyone around her. And that seems to be like the issue with all the characters in this movie. Let's talk about, uh, what's his face? Gurney. Yeah, the Gurney in the book is fiercely loyal to the Atreides. Paul's father to Paul, and when he thinks that, th that they're dead, well, all he has is revenge, literally. So he stays on Arrakis hoping to kill Raban, to kill as many Harkonnens as he can. But when he discovers that Paul is alive, that revenge stuff is literally, you know, he, he puts a cork in it. All that doesn't matter anymore. The most important thing is Paul. He has loyalty for him, he cares for him, he wants to see him win, he wants to see him defeat his enemies, and he would die for him. And he was concerned to see that Paul is different from his father, because his father would care about men more than equipment. So that Gurney, all of a sudden, not caring at all for Paul, for his mental health, for the Fremen, and how he would push him to use them, to use his power, to defeat his enemies, no matter the cost? What, what the hell? How could you get him so wrong? That is nothing like the Gurney in the book. Jessica, Jessica's portrayed as if, I don't know, she's stronger than Paul. She has clear vision of the path that he needs to take in order to win before Paul does. And not just her, the other River Mother, uh, Helen Gaius Muhayim, they both seem to know exactly what Paul is going to do before he does it, before Paul even sees it. They even portrayed as telepathic at the end of the movie. They can communicate with one another without talking. What the hell are you... What? Excuse me. What the hell did I just see? Have you even read these books? Do you even understand? This is not like a Harry Potter book. They're not wizards. The Doom books are indeed, yes, sci-fi, but they're not fantasy. This is Frank Herbert's expectation for the future. Literally, these books, they take place in about like 10,000 something into the future, AD. They're a prediction for the future of the human race. And characters don't just develop psychic abilities for no reason. Even the abilities that the Bene Gesserit have and the Paul has, they have reasons in these books. If you read the books, I don't want to delve into them too deeply, you'd understand why Paul can see the future and, and the past and all these things and why he can use the voice and what is the voice and all these things, they're physical abilities and all these abilities have explanations behind them. Telepathy doesn't have any explanation in the book. If they're telepathic and if they're that strong and if their vision is stronger than Paul, why the hell do they need him? I mean, they supposedly have been breeding for 90 generations to get Paul, right? The Lisan El Gaib or the Kwisatz Sadrach or whatever. The the chosen one of the Matrix, sort of like the, the hero character that can just do all the good things and, you know, defeat all the bad guys and lead them to prosperity and uh, chicken nuggies and all that. They're stronger than him, so why the hell do they need him? Uh, look, I think this movie gets so many characters wrong and so many events wrong and so many little details and big details are just completely misses out. Like, for example, why was Phaedratha even tested? Paul was tested because he was trained to be a Bene Gesserit and a Mintat and he was the genetic result of 90 generations of breeding. He was the perfect specimen for them that they've been seeking. And he wielded too much power in his head, his brain. He was trained from a very young age to be a Bene Gesserit. And then he was trained again by his father's mentat to be a mentat. So he was, his brain was like a supercomputer, right? And he was heading into Arrakis where he would be exposed to spice that would give him visions. And because his brain is so strong, he would actually process this, these visions and start to see past and present the future like nobody else ever could, not even the River Mothers or the Mintats or the Guild Navigators. Speaking of the Guild, where the hell is the Guild in this movie? Because literally the Guild is the main force that, this, that decides that Paul wins and becomes the Emperor, right? The Emperor himself has no control over this galaxy. The Guild is literally the biggest force in the book. 
and it's not in the movie. I understand that the people that say that they like this movie, they think that the movie gets uh, the essence of the story, right? Which is basically, there's no such a thing as a hero, because Paul isn't a hero, right? He uses the Fremen to get what he wants, and he abuses them, and the, the hero main character, Messiah... Uh, concept it's not real and i understand that in the book paul himself sees himself that way how a character sees himself and how he actually is are completely different things paul might not see himself as a hero but his actions say otherwise because ultimately the reason why paul chose this path because this was the best path not just for him but for the rest of humanity the other paths that he saw they could lead to a war that would engulf the entire universe it could even lead to wiping out the human race and the reason why he chose this path is because the guild literally would force the great houses to accept his rule because that's how, the, how it works. The guild controls all space travel. Anybody that would oppose the guild would literally would be grounded on this planet, right? So no, no interplanetary trading, no space travel, nothing. You'd be grounded on your planet, you'd be cut off from the rest of the universe, and that's it. And that's why the guild controls literally the entire galaxy. But the guild needs spice and Paul controls it. So he controls the guild and that's how he came to control the entire universe and become emperor. Yes, there was fighting in the books, but the fighting was on a much smaller scale there were a few planets that opposed his ruling and that's when he used the Fremen to fight them and all that is according to his visions he didn't want to kill anybody he didn't want to wage any war it was the only way the movie makes it so that all the great houses oppose his ruling and therefore he unleashes the Fremen on all the planets all the planets in the entire universe that sounds to me like a freaking massacre man that's the, the exact same thing that he was trying to avoid in the books and he does avoid yes there's fighting yes there's war across the the universe but it's on a much smaller scale than this the one portrayed in the movie and all that is because of the guild the guild is the reason and the driving force why the war is on a smaller scale but all of that gets removed the guild gets completely removed from the movie and it just becomes open war, as if this guy is a bloodthirsty just tyrant. If you've read the books and you know what this guy does and how his life ends, I don't want to spoil for anybody. I mean, I've already spoiled plenty, but like, I don't want to spoil this for people that haven't read the books yet, because like, they're really good books. How Paul's life and journey ends in these books is one that's just, it's really painful. He goes through a lot of pain and suffering, and it's all for the greater good of himself, of his family, of the entire universe universe if that person isn't a hero then i don't know who the hell is a hero i'm i'm really really disappointed in this movie and i understand that people love it but as far as like interpreting dune into a movie this movie gets dune completely wrong and it pisses me the hell off that people actually like this movie and think it's a good representation of dune all I can say to you is just go back and read the book. Anyways, I'm sorry for ranting. I just really needed to vent. I was I was really hyped for this movie. I was waiting for it for like three years now. And well, I don't know what's going on right now with like movies. It's like they can't get anything right at this point. And whenever they try to make like a live action movie from like a very successful book or a video game or something, it's, it's like they come in and they just don't want to stay faithful to the source material whatsoever. So I hope you're all doing well and uh, bye.